Hey guys, Mama Casso 7 here again, and I am here today with a, I don't know if you call it a quick tip or what. Um, the last time that I showed you guys a Smashbook, I got some questions about um, what I had used to make the bubble wrap stamping and things like that, and so I wanted to just kind of show you what I do. I come from a background of crafting where I've always crafted, but there was a time when I only had literally one stamp set one ink pad and a pair of scissors and a multicolor cardstock pack from Joanne that I got for like $2.50. And I learned really quickly how to make spectacular things out of just what I had because I saw things that I liked but I didn't want to pay for them because, you know, if I can do it myself, why pay for it? Um, kind of an example here, I don't know how well you can see, but I've used bubble wrap to stamp here, here, and here and a little bit down here and I wanted to kind of show you guys how to use that and um, also do a few other things. Another example would be here. I've done bubble wrap stamping here and here and I overlaid different colors and I also used this doily that I painted purple and I used it as a stencil or a mask or whatever you want to call it and was able to create my own pattern. So I just wanted to show you some quick tips today on how to do that for yourself. Um, what I have is I got this foam block thing out of some packaging of my husband's. Um, it has some really cool almost bubble texture, but it's almost more like maybe an alligator like, I don't know. Um, bubble wrap. For any of us crafters, this is good for so many things. Um, and I, I don't have to keep very much because I learned that what I can do is this is a huge acrylic block that I have. I don't know how well you can see that. But I've taken bubble wrap like this, I've cut it down and wrapped it around and then taped it here. And I'm able to paint onto it, use it as a stamp, and then turn around and clean it off and I don't have to throw it away. Um, so it's just become kind of part of my crafting collection. Um, I also have my infamous doilies. I know you've seen them in all of my smash books. And this was actually, this used to be an envelope and I received it media mail and it was really cool. The whole inside is corrugated um, and it's got it's not an adhesive, but it has some kind of residue on it that actually helps keep the paint and ink on it, and it gives it a really cool texture when you stamp with it. Um, here are some samples that I've done. This is using the doily. This is with the block. And then this is with the corrugated envelope, I guess you'd call it. Um, and then this, of course, is the bubble wrap, which I love to use. So I'm just going to show you really quick, um, easy way to make some textures for your backgrounds. Um, you can use this for smashing, you can use this for cards, you can use it for scrapbooking, you can use it for wrapping paper. It's really cool on wrapping paper. Um, something that I don't have here, I, I've misplaced it, but um, I made in my last video a background for my smash page out of my reindeer negatives and you can do what I'm doing here with that as well. You can cut a bunch of stuff on your silhouette, on your Cricut, on your um, cuddle bug or your big shot or whatever. Do some kind of repeating pattern and then you can make wrapping paper. You can make a background for your scrapbooking and your smashing. So I'm just going to show you really quick. I've got just some generic different card stocks and decorative papers just to give you an idea. Um, here I have a um, couple different colors of paint. I've got some Tim Holtz um, sponges, some Tim Holtz Distress Stain. Uh, I've also got some Versamagic Dew Drop ink pads and I also have some Tattered Angels Glitter Mist so that I can show you all different kinds of backgrounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the doily because I use doilies in pretty much every aspect of my crafting. What you do is you just put as much or as little of the doily as you want onto your page. Um, I'm going to do it kind of like that. Um, 
get your paintbrush, get you some paint, and you don't want to swipe, you want to more dab because if you swipe it's going to get up underneath the holes and then it's not going to come out as crisp so you want to just kind of dab it on there and you do like I said you can do it really solid you can do it kind of stippled you can do it um, multicolored there's no harm in putting different colors together and it just makes a really fun background and I know you might be thinking okay I'm using paint how long am I going to have to wait for that to dry? Because if you're anything like me, you don't really want to sit and wait for something to dry. That's where your handy dandy heating tool comes in. Um, you can dry it in under 30 seconds and then move on. I think 30 seconds is an appropriate amount of time to wait anything longer than that and it might not be worth it for your smash page. Um, so now I'm just going to lift it up and you've got a really cool texture there. And if you use a color on there, like I did in my Smashbook, if you use like purple or green or whatever color, then you're able to um, then reuse the doily as a doily, but it's a colored doily and it's really cool. So I've done that. Um, I'm going to show you on the other side how it would look if we use a little bit of Distress Stain. I'm going to use Broken China by Tim Holtz. Um, I have this really cool dauber here that I got from Teresa Collins um, when I took her background class, which was so fun. You just want to push it on here, and you don't have to use something fancy like this. The only reason I have it is because I got really lucky and got it at my convention. But you can also use something as simple as like a 10 cent sponge. There's no reason you can't use this. It does the same thing. Um, I like this because I can hold it better but um, so you would just daub it on here now the distress stains are going to give you more of a <clears throat> excuse me are going to give you more of a watermark feel on your um, background paper you're not going to be able to see it it's not going to be quite as strong but that's okay because sometimes subtlety is the key to um, a good decoration or a good page and as you can see, I'm able to then probably reuse this doily afterwards and um, use it as a blue background. It's really cool. So, there we go. That's that. Now, like I said, this has a more watermarked feel. It kind of, it didn't come out as clear because it has, it's so liquid, but it kind of leaves a cool watermarky spongy look which really looks cool to me I mean I think it would look really cool on a background um, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like with some ink just really quick got an extra doily here I'm going to do this and I'm going to choose Versa Magic Pretty Petunia and these are really great because you just hold them and go to town you don't have to worry about doing anything fancy with them just push down and again you don't want to swipe it because you'll not only will it not really hold its um, pattern very well but it'll also rip your doily because they're so fine um, especially if you get the cheaper ones at the Dollar Tree like I do um, so here again you'll have one that you can use as a purple doily and then you'll have one that you can use for your stencil so it comes out kind of cool you don't have to overshoot it but there again we're not shooting for perfection we're looking for something that looks different and unique so those are the kinds of things you can do with your doily you can also use glimmer mist this is from tattered angels and it's called I think I told you in the last video party pink aha there we go you don't want to shake it up and down because it'll clog your um, sprayer. Just side to side is good. And I'm just going to spritz it on here like this. And as you can see, it overshoots, but that's actually kind of cool for a background. Um, and then it leaves a really neat stencil there like that. So this is just one of the many reasons that I love doilies. They are so versatile. Um, let's move on to some bubble wrap because that was the one I got the most questions about. Basically, 
you just need a little bit of acrylic paint and bubble wrap. And I think I showed you how I've wrapped my acrylic block. The reason I wrapped it in around an acrylic block was because bubble wrap gives really easily and I like more of an even stamp when I'm stamping. Um, so it just works nicer for me, but if you want something a little bit more sloppy, please be my guest. Um, so I'm gonna use these words because I really like layering things with words. Um, when you're painting the the bubble wrap, you don't want it to be super thick. You don't want it to get all down in between the bubbles because, I mean, unless you want this look, this is what will happen if you do that. You want it more, what I like it more like that so that it's more defined. So you're just gonna take your paintbrush can be any paintbrush, any paint. I use acrylic paint from Walmart um, that I've had for years. And you just place it wherever you want and stamp. And then every once in a while you get that awesome pop too. Yeah. <laughs> so then you've got a really cool background there for a card or a smashbook or whatever. And you can repeat stamp over and over. You can also layer your colors. I think I'm going to use this right here and use some blue. Just kind of gently put some on there, not too much because I just want it to be a little bit. And just overlay it like that. And then you've got an even cooler effect because you've got the two colors and it's super spiffy. And this would make a really fun thing in your Smashbook, I think. Something that's not something that I've ever actually used in a Smashbook, but I did discover this really cool block, the alligator looking thing. It almost gives a distressed wood look, I guess, when you use it. And uh, I just really liked the textures. This is what happens when you use a whole bunch and you get it down in between the cracks. It's kind of like bubble wrap in that regard. And you get more of the texture when you do less paint. So I'm gonna use my orange. And I'm going to just kind of dab some off on the side here. And as you can see, I'm using an egg carton because I am all about some using what I have. I'm um, just going to paint this on here thin and easy. Make sure the texture is covered, but it didn't have to get in the cracks or anything. And then we're just going to take this and use it just like a stamp. And then you have this really cool wood looking texture here which i just love i can't wait to use it in my smashbook i'm totally totally stoked um so that one's pretty self-explanatory um the last thing that i have here to show you is this the envelope that i showed you before um what i did was i just wrapped it around itself and put some washi tape on it to hold it so it had a little bit more structure so it wasn't as floppy um I think I'm going to go back to using this, get my blue paint here, and uh, just paint it on here. And what's really great about this is when you're done using it for texture, you can then use this part in your book as well. I think I showed you in my last two videos, I use a lot of corrugated product that I get from packaging for just depth and background on my um, smash pages because it just adds a little bit of life. It doesn't have to have a reason for being there. So this is a little bit more subtle but you can see it creates this really cool line pattern. Um, you could cross hatch it if you wanted to and do it all at all angles. Um, it doesn't have to be just one direction. So I'm gonna like make an X here with it. You want to put even pressure all over the back so you transfer all the ink. So now what you've got is a really cool pattern on the back. Instead of just up and down, it goes across. So you can do that all over. Um, and you can mix and match all of these things as well. You don't have to just use one. You could use bubble wrap and then put a different color and put that over it. You could put the bubble wrap with the doilies or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, Let's see. I think that that's all I had for you. Um, I will leave a list of all the items that I've used. Um, 
basically just any time that you get a package in the mail, um, look through it because sometimes there's really cool packaging. My husband found this really cool thing in a package that he got and I used it for a bunch of artist trading cards that I made for Halloween um, and I still have a bunch left. I've used some of it in my Smashbook. I, I just love it because you can paint it, you can distress it, you can cut it, you can rip it and it's just the coolest thing ever. Um, bubble wrap envelopes, they're all really good. A lot of packages will have some corrugated item in it. Um, sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll get white corrugation. Um, that's one of my favorites because the color really pops on them. Um, but just have fun with what you have. Look around your house and things that you wouldn't ordinarily think, hey, that would make a really cool craft item. Just look at it. See what you can do with it. See if you can distress it. See if you can paint it, smash it, whatever. And just have a lot of fun with it and know that you don't have to have a lot of money to create really cool textures and patterns. Um, it's, it's so easy and so quick. And like I said, as long as you've got your handy dandy heat tool, you can use paint and be done in under 30 seconds. It's not like you have to wait all day for it to dry. So I hope this inspires you. I really want to see what you guys come up with. If you can come up with something that I haven't shown you here, I would love to see it. I'm always looking for new ideas. Um, link up, subscribe, send me a comment. I'll see you guys soon, hopefully with some more Christmas crafts. Talk to you later.